Hey everyone, it wasn't all that long ago where I did a large language model video of something that was running locally from home and I got an update for you. Now I did try to mess with it in the meantime, I did promise a lot of people that I was going to continue to work on it, and I did, but it's frustrating, it's very frustrating. I did warn and allude to it in the video, but this is a very fast moving repository. And it felt like every time I got something working in kind of like a fledgling state, some new technology would come out, something that makes it even better, even easier. But today I have some great news for you. If you've been waiting for this to get very easy, now might be the right time. It looks like there's been some major updates to this repository, and more importantly, the one-click installer is working beautifully. The most important update here though is that the one-click installer, especially for Windows, has the inclusion of 8-bit and 4-bit working. If you saw my previous video, and I do recommend because that's going to have a lot more examples for what this technology can do, I did mention there that this eats up all of your video memory. And there were a lot of instances where I really had to tone down my output because I was really treading the line with the 12 gigabytes of video memory that I have on the 3080 Ti that I'm currently using. So both of these technologies reduce the amount of video RAM that the model uses. So you can load this bad boy up now and you're only using maybe half of your video RAM. You could technically run this and maybe stable diffusion at the same time. So we're now reaching a point in time where large language models are maybe not so large. And what I wanted to do here really briefly is just basically demonstrate Alpaca 4-bit. That's going to be the technology that we're using here. And more importantly here, I'm only using about 65% of my video memory. We'll just ask a few questions here so you can get an idea of how quickly this can move and what type of answers, the complexity, all that fun stuff. So we're just going to use a couple of fun examples here and kind of see what pops up. Show me the colors of the rainbow. Let's see what it gets. Now you'll notice that it says here that it's typing. Um, it kicks out the answer, which is, you'll notice that I got the right answer here. Now, I won't say that this thing is right all the time. In fact, there's a lot of examples that I could show you where this thing is going to give you wrong answers. I don't know what this is trained on or how it's trained. Can you show me an example of C sharp? Let's see if we can do code, because code is something that Google Bard refused to do for me. Now that is an example of C sharp code that would work in Visual Studio, sure. Let's see if I can do Java. Ooh, look at that. We got the little box and everything. Now it didn't exactly format it properly. That might be related to this CAI chat thing. Um, for how HTML is being interpreted here, but it does look like it actually formulated, it made a class, it made a function. It's not amazing, but it is something more than what we had before, and it is certainly the smartest large language model that I've been able to run locally at this point. But again, more impressively, I'm using half the video RAM that I was able to use before. So being able to run this concurrently with other things at the same time, that's part of the excitement here. So you want to scroll down on the main GitHub page to the installation section, and you can go ahead and download the installer here. Once you extract everything into a directory, you just simply want to run this install file. It's a very lengthy process after you've selected your video card, but it's going to basically go through all of these files. You end up with the same files that you started with, plus a couple of folders. The installer files folder is most of the stuff that's being downloaded here, and then the entire GitHub repository is going to be downloaded in its own separate folder. And if you messed with this before, if you played with it with Conda or anything like that, that folder structure should be familiar to you at least. But if not, the only one that really matters is the models folder. Again, this part takes a long time. You should wait for it. But once it's done, we're going to run this download model batch file. And that gives us some options for models that we can download and we can even type in our own. So while this is downloading, and I've already downloaded it, so I'll go ahead and cancel it here. But for you, while you're downloading in the background maybe, you should head over to Hugging Face. You should take a look at their models and you should search for Alpaca. Alpaca is a version of Llama that's meant to be lightweight and it's something that you can download directly from Hugging Face. Now, at the time when I searched, I had 318 options, but the one that we're really looking for here is the native 4-bit. And for my purposes, this is the specific one that I chose. And whether or not you wanna make a note of this W bits and this group size, uh, we're gonna come back to that in a minute. But once your own install is finished, you just want to run this download model.bat. You can certainly feel free to pick one of these and try it out, but for our purposes, we're going to use none of the above. And you can see how it gives you the slash options. You can just type anything you want here. For our purpose, we're going to use the Hugging Face, the Oscar Alpaca 4-bit model. And you want to type it out just like this. 
and it's going to go ahead and download. Now once it downloads, you're going to want to change the name of it, or at least I did, because it still had that Ozker name. So I went into the models folder and I just removed that. So I was left with alpaca hyphen native hyphen four bit. And we are almost ready to go. It was that easy. The last thing that we need to do is basically set up our batch file with the appropriate commands. We want to make sure that we load into the right mode, load the right model and all that good stuff. I know this is kind of an intense batch file, but really this is the only line here that matters. Um, everything after this server.py. So we want to do auto devices. That'll determine how much video RAM we have and split things accordingly. So hopefully you'll never run out. Now this CAI chat is depreciated. We can actually just type chat now, but it does work just like this. For the model, of course, we're gonna use that alpaca name that we just popped in there. Then we see this W bits of four, just like we saw on the website, the group size of 128, just like we saw on the website. Those are telling the web UI program how to quantize the model. No stream is maybe a little bit of a personal choice, but that gives you the assistant is typing and then everything pops up at once. If you don't include this option, you're going to see the words kind of pop out one at a time. It's a little bit slower, though, if you do it that way. So that's up to you, but this is definitely the faster way of doing things. But once you have all of that running, you should be able to just start the web UI. You'll notice that we did get the message about CAI chat being depreciated, but it does work. It loads the Alpaca native model and it's done. And as soon as it is done, you can go ahead and go right into the web UI. I think it's kind of cool that it holds on to the last piece of your conversation, but if you do want to clear it out, you can do that. As this web UI continues to get built up, we're seeing different tabs and things like that pop up here at the top. So you've got a character tab, parameters, training. You can actually make your own Laura. So coming up real soon in a future video, we'll make our own chatbot with our own training material. And that'll all start right here. But this repository continues to get updated, sometimes what seems like hourly. So what I would encourage you to do is make sure that you continue to run this install command, because every time you run it, it's gonna check for the newest version of the files and make sure that you're up to date, which in my opinion is a very, very cool feature. Having already seen this repo break a bunch of times and get fixed and get kind of rebuilt and redone in different ways, my hope is that this is kind of the last time that I have to install it, but it probably won't be, and I, I'm, I'm cool with that. I do really hope that this video is helpful to you. And I really appreciate those of you who are asking me questions and, and kind of constantly pushing me towards this. It was, it was frustrating to get through the install process, especially when I was trying to get through the Ubuntu Linux installation version of everything. But I'm glad that I did finally get it working. It's very satisfying to finally get running. With the way that this is set up now, I probably have the free video RAM to be able to do something like actually use this as an engine for my tank bot in my Discord, for example. But again, and as always, I appreciate your time with me here today. Thanks for watching.